Welcome to Fast Pencil, the only end-to-end -end digital publishing workflow that simplifies the process of creating and publishing books and ebooks. My name is Michael Ashley and I'm the co-founder and CTO at Fast Pencil. Today I'm going to give you an overview of our digital publishing workflow. Whether you are an individual author wishing to self-publish books and ebooks, a publisher trying to connect your authors and editors, cut costs, and speed up your time to market, or an enterprise looking for a way to leverage years of content, Fast Pencil is the solution to power your publishing needs. If you're using Fast Pencil as an author or a publisher, the first thing you're going to do is create an account. Go to fastpencil.com and sign up. A Fast Pencil account is free for authors and publishers to start using the Fast Pencil platform. Publishers can purchase a publisher's account, which is an upgrade to the standard account. And this allows you to upload your own imprint and brand and metadata so when you publish you can actually have a book with your own information on it instead of Fast Pencil. So logging into Fast Pencil is easy. Create your account, username, password, enter your first name, last name, and email address. This is important because we'll be sending you an update or a confirmation so that you can uh, verify your account. And then click the sign up button. I already have an account, so I'm going to log in. Once you're logged into Fast Pencil, you will see your dashboard. Your dashboard is a quick snapshot of everything that's going on with you, your projects, and your friends. You can see here I have one pending friendship request. I can also see some messages that have been sent to me through the, pro through the tool. I can also see my projects that I'm working on and I can also share my progress with my friends. That's, let's see, then there's also my account. When you go to my account you can edit your account information. You can upload an image you can enter in content about yourself that others can read. You can tell others where to find you online, like your Facebook URL or your Twitter URL, LinkedIn, and your website. Um, and then you'll save that information and it will be saved to your account profile. You can also um, quickly see if you have any publications or orders or if you've purchased author services um, or if you have any downloads available. Once you publish your book, you can also quickly see your royalties from book sales. You can edit your payee information. This is where your um, royalties get sent. And if you want to uh, have a, an affiliate account where you can make money by sending people to Fast Pencil, you can also see your affiliate dashboard here. That is essentially the account login uh, piece of Fast Pencil. Once you are logged into Fast Pencil, uh, you can quickly create projects by clicking the Start a New Project button. I'm going to take you through a few steps on how to quickly start a um, project and rough out the uh, chapters using uh, the online Fast Pencil editor. So the first thing I'm going to do is click Start a New Project, and I'm going to choose Create a Book or eBook. I'm going to call this uh, my uh, ebook memoir, and I'm going to leave it as private for now. Your settings can change later if you want to invite other people into the project to look at it or read or comment or things like that. But right now, I'm just going to leave it as private. That means that I'm the only one who can read and edit this project. So the project summary page is created. You can see the title that I entered here and my name and a summary if I wanted to put a little summary of uh, what the book was in case I was working with some collaborators or something and I wanted people to kinda know what was going on. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is click write. So 
When I click right, it opens up our chapter menu. The chapter menu is not only a uh, navigation bar where you can quickly jump between chapters, but it's also an outlining tool. And we're going to use this to quickly create our chapters. Since I'm doing a memoir, I'm going to probably need an introduction. Um, I might have something about uh, the uh, early years. Um, and then I might have some high school and how about college um, work and career and let's see if I have something in here about family how about marriage and family and I'll put in something about uh, wisdom and reflections and then you will notice here that we have basically a, the structure of the book really quickly outlined one other thing that I can do is I can um, enter in uh, subsections right here and I can drag them into place so maybe I need to some have something in here about um, my wife and my children um, and I can just grab the little white arrow here next to my wife and I can bring and drag her inside of marriage and family and along with my children I can put them into that chapter as well and by doing that not only have I created the top level uh, table of contents structure but I've created subsections and because our platform is smart it actually knows that these are subsections and they'll be nested and designed appropriately in the templates once you go to uh, publish the book now that the chapters are created I can click on any chapter at any time and open the editor so let's start on my high school chapter <clears throat> and you'll see the editor comes up and it's an elegant online editor there's no software to download there's no flash or anything this is completely written in JavaScript and Ajax and it is an online editor that you can access from any browser um, on any computer I'm just gonna enter some information right in here um, let's start with a quote never 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 give Okay, and then let's uh, do some writing. I went to high school, let's see, I went to Royal High in Simi Valley. Okay, so you can see here that I've entered text directly into the editor. It's a nice clean editor, it's very elegant. Um, you can click on text and do things like bold, italics, you can center it, um, and uh, you can also um, see what you've changed the revisions between each one so let's say I went to uh, Royal in, in High in Simi Valley um, well, let's see when I was 14 I moved to uh, Spokane Washington and uh, went to Central Valley High School okay and I'll save that so one thing I can do is I can hit the revisions button here and I can go back and see the difference between my current chapter and or my current revision and the prior one. This is useful for myself just so that I can see what I added and what I deleted, but it's also useful if you're working collaboratively with others, you can see what was changed um, and and by who uh, you know who made the change here which which author it was. Um, if I actually wanted to revert to the previous version, I could actually click the revert button here and it would go back to the version um, where I went to Royal High and see me and I didn't have the extra stuff. So I can just click the revert button and it'll change my chapter back to the um, to the prior, prior version here. Okay? Um, and say you made a mistake and you didn't actually want to do that, you could actually go back to your revisions and you can see here that the new version, the version, the reverted version is actually another version that was created here uh, where it shows this whole sentence was deleted. Okay, and so um, reversion, revision control is uh, very powerful on Fast Pencil and is built right into the editor. Um, the other thing that is uh, unique about Fast Pencil is that you can um, bring in content from other sources. So 
you, you, you can write directly into the tool at any time from anywhere. We also have an iPhone and iPad app, so you can um, do your writing from your uh, mobile devices. But you can also import content. So I'm going to import a file. I'm going to uh, browse and grab, uh, let's say, um, a brief history. And it's a Microsoft Word document. And uh, brief history. And what our system will do is it will um, open up the uh, Word document. It'll uh, scrape the content. And it'll remove as much of the extra Microsoft Word um, coding that is typically added. Uh, and you, you'll see it a lot when you try and bring Microsoft Word documents and turn them into EPUBs or whatever. But you'll see here the brief history has been imported. Um, and let's take that and put it here inside of the introduction. We'll just make it a subsection of the introduction. And I'll click on that here. And you can see that our system will go through and actually remove all of the um, extra coding that is usually added by Microsoft Word. So I'm going to take this out and uh, pull this up to the top. I'll save it. And now I have a, a brief history subsection uh, inside of my introduction. Okay. Then the other way that you can import te text into um, uh, Fast Pencil is through blog posts. Um, I'm not going to do it in this uh, demo. I'll do it in the next demo. But you can essentially uh, enter your blog URL or an XML file, and you can import uh, the data directly into Fast Pencil. So that is a quick overview of how to create a project and how to structure your table of contents how to rearrange the order by drag and drop, and also how to import Microsoft Word documents into the tool. Uh, the next um, uh, demo, I'll talk a little bit about the blog import, and then we'll go into um, inviting collaborators and working with others on Fast Pencil. In the last video, um, I talked about how to quickly create a project and outline the chapters. In this video, we're going to import blog posts. And there's uh, two ways that you can import, actually three ways you can import blog posts. Once you've created your project, you're going to go down to the Import Blog Posts link. And you can either enter your blog URL, like a blogger URL or a WordPress URL. Or you can upload an XML file, which was exported from Blogger or WordPress. The way that we're going to do it here is we're going to actually enter in a uh, URL for a blog that I created um, when I went on a Baja surf trip with my brother a few years ago. And what our system will do is it'll actually go to the blog, and it will check to see if there's an RSS feed. If there's an RSS feed available, um, typically, the RSS feed that's available publicly through a blog is limited to the first or the last 10 um, articles, and sometimes it only has a summary. Um, you can import that information if that's the way that your blog is set up and that's what you want. Or if you want to get directly from the blog, you can actually enter in your, um, your username and password for the blog system, whether that's Blogger or WordPress. Um, our system will actually log in and it will capture all of the blog entries that you have available within a time period. So I have 16 entries in here. I'm not going to import all of them, so I'm going to uncheck that. But I'm going to pull in three or four just so that you can see um, how that works. And um, if I didn't want to bring the images in, if I just wanted to have the text, I could check this box. But I'm going to bring in the images as well so I can show you kind of how our system handles images. I'm going to hit Import, and um, Fast Pencil will actually log in, and it will uh, grab all of the blogs, and it'll put them into the Table of Contents area so that you can manage them just like they were standard uh, chapters in your book. You can move them around, you can reorder them, you can edit them just like you would if you were going to clean up your manuscript and get it ready for publishing. One of the cool things about our system is when it actually imports the blog posts, it will look at the image tags that come through. If the image is actually a link, some blogs will put a thumbnail image up for the, uh, the post 
and then behind the thumbnail they'll have the high-res image. Our system will actually go in and grab the high-res image and import that in as well so that you have a higher res image to work with rather than the thumbnail that's typically at the front of the blog. So here you can see um, the last four chapters that were imported are from my blog and let's just put a title here um, blog posts and let's bring that up here to the top and then we'll put these inside of here just to kind of stay a little more organized and maybe have uh, uh, you know have this uh, information uh, in an easier way for people to understand when they read it um, and as a matter of fact maybe we won't call it blog posts maybe I'll actually just change that name let me change that real quick to um, uh, my Baja surf trip we'll save that okay so if I go in now and I look at kite surfing San Carlos you'll see that all the content was brought in and it's nice and clean and also the image was uh, was brought in and this image here is a low res uh, image for placement only but I could click on this if I wanted to and I could move that let's say I don't want it at the bottom but I actually want to put it up at the top above my content and let's say that I actually don't want it to just be a real big image but I want it to float left or right that means that I want text to wrap around it I'm gonna float this um, and uh, I'm going to have the text wrap to the left of the image, okay? And I'll just save and close that. And then when the um, EPUB and the book is produced, the image will actually be resized. It'll be moved over to the right, and the text will actually flow around the image. In the editor, you don't see that because the text is actually here just for editing for placement. But um, once we do the preview, you'll see how this works. Um, and then I can go back to my um, my table of contents. I can see any of the uh, blog posts. And like I said, this is a very nice, easy way to go in and, and edit and uh, clean up your blog posts and get them ready for publishing and, uh, and have all of the images in there ready for you to use. So that's how you import a blog or blog posts into your project to get them ready for um, publishing. In the next video, we will talk about collaboration and how you actually work with others on your project. On Fast Pencil, it's actually really easy to work with others on your project, whether that's an editor or just some friends or a collaborator, maybe a co-author. Um, or maybe even a cover designer. Um, what we have built into our system is an invite button where you can actually see who is working on the project with you. You can see the collaborators from my ebook memoir are uh, project managers, co authors, editors, and reviewers. And the different levels are important. Um, project managers, actually, you can have one project manager. A project manager is somebody who can do everything that you can with the project except delete it. They can um, publish it, they can help you, you know, set it up with the templates, they can um, edit it, they can uh, go through the publishing wizard and those kinds of things. A co-author is um, can do everything that you can except for the publishing steps. So they can do the writing and the editing and they can invite others into the project to work with you or to be reviewers etc. Um, they just can't delete it or um, and they can't publish it. Uh, you as the owner, project owner, um, it, you have to publish the project. Editors, on the other hand, um, are very similar to co-authors, except they cannot um, they cannot invite other people to the project. So an editor is someone who you might say, you know, I'd like you to come in uh, and line edit my uh, document. You can change uh, any of the text in the chapters. You can add, delete things. Um, and I can, you know, the, the project owner has final um, approval on all of that stuff, so you can see what the editor is doing. But the editor can't delete your project, they can't publish your project, they cannot invite others to your project. They really are there to help you work on your project. And then reviewers finally are um, people who can read and comment on your project, but they really can't do anything else. They have no editing control, they can't uh, delete, they can't do anything to your project, they can only read and comment on it. Okay, so I'm going to uh, add a few people here. Um, uh, my project manager, I'm going to just click Add New Project Manager, 
And um, what we'll do is uh, Fast Pencil will come up and you can either enter people in by email address um, or you can select from your Fast Pencil friends. These are people who maybe are already friends with you on Fast Pencil. Or if you want, you can actually click on the Facebook link or tab and you can invite your Facebook friends. So let's say you're going to do a cookbook and you'd like to have six or seven people work on it with you uh, and there you can get them through Facebook then that's a real convenient way to um, to add them okay so I'm going to just go ahead and add in uh, Steve Wilson as my um, editor you will see that as soon as I clicked it he was added to the to field here Steve Wilson and um, the subject Michael Ashley would like to add you as a fast pencil manager to my ebook memoir. I can go in and leave the default message here if I want, or I can actually just select all of it, delete it, and say, Hi, Steve, I've added you to my project as a project manager. Please, let's see here. Let's get together and discuss this. and I'll invite him and an email will get sent to Steve and he'll get invited to the uh, project so that he can now become my project manager. Um, there's also uh, a way for you to go in through the tabs here on your project summary page. To get back to your project summary page at any time by the way you would click the link next to the home button. This is the title of your book and it's actually the link back to your project summary page. Once you're on your project summary page though, you can go over to the collaborators tab and you can also get a quick uh, view of who has accepted um, your position. So you saw that I had invited Steve. Steve hasn't accepted it yet, so he's not listed here as my project manager. Um, but uh, once he accepts, he'll be listed here and I'll be able to uh, see all of the people who I'm collaborating with on my book. The other thing about this um, tabbed area right here is your project discussion um, area. This is a great spot for you to stay in touch with everyone. Uh, let's start here. This is the kickoff for my new book. Uh, let's get this wrapped up quickly and launched this summer. Okay when I hit save it will not only be stored here in my project summary page but an email will get sent to all of my collaborators so they can um, stay up to date with the discussion that's going on around this uh, topic or around this project the whole time and anyone who is a collaborator can participate in the discussion um, the second tab recent comments and edits is really important because I, I'll be able to see quickly who has been working on the project with me. If one of my editors w was in um, a chapter and they actually made some changes, uh, let's just go in here real quick and make some changes. Let's see. Um, because my mom save that real quick. Okay, and I'm going to go back to the project summary page here and uh, we'll go to recent comments and edits and you'll see here that work and career was edited by Michael Ashley less than a minute ago. And this is a really useful tab when you're working with collaborators because Steve may have gone in and made some changes as my project manager. He may have uh, moved some uh, content around or edited stuff. Um, or an editor may have gone in and made some changes. I can actually quickly see who's been working on what and uh, and when things were done. If I wanted to, at that point, I could click on work and career. I could go directly to this chapter, and if I wanted to see what was done to it, I could click on revisions. And of course, like I showed you before, I could compare this current uh, version with the prior version, and I can quickly see that this information here was added. Okay. The next tab over, uh, we talked about the collaborators tab. This is how you would add and manage the other people that you want to work with on the book. 
And then the notes here finally is a private area. Um, oh. I can actually write notes to myself and save them. And these are just reminders, little stickies for me to remember what's going on. But they're not viewable by anyone else, and no one else can edit them. OK, so in uh, review, Fast Pencil allows you to quickly collaborate with just about anyone that you have an email address for um, or a Facebook uh, friend. And you can invite them quickly by just clicking the Invite button. Um, once they, um, uh, once they um, accept the invitation, they'll show up in your Collaborators tab here. Um, and you guys can all use the discussion area to talk about the project. You can also see recent comments and edits for who's been working on what and if they've commented on any of the areas. And um, you can uh, also use the revision tool to go back in and see who's made what changes and if you want to revert or, or move back and forth. Um, in the next uh, video, um, I'm going to talk about the preview button, and this button here is the magic of Fast Pencil. This is what really allows you to transform all of this content that you've been working on and massaging and editing, uh, how to transform that into a beautiful uh, book that's ready for printing, as well as uh, ebook, EPUB, Mobi conversion. And our system will do all of that for you automatically. That's in the next video. The magic of Fast Pencil really is in the preview button. Uh, once you've r uh, outlined your chapters and you've done your editing and reorganizing and uh, massaging of your content, you've worked with your collaborators and you've made comments and edits, etc., and you're ready to actually see what your book will look like when it's published, you can click the preview button. A Fast Pencil is based on an idea that you keep your content separate from your design until you're ready to publish. And your content is all in the editor and it's stored in a structured way. When you're ready to publish, you're going to choose one of the templates. Now, these templates are um, the fixed templates that we've created for the online Fast Pencil platform. If you're a publisher and, or an enterprise and you want to license our platform and customize it specifically for your needs, we can discuss how to create new templates for you or templates that are specific to your uh, requirements. But as an independent author, we created these templates. And these templates really are professional templates that look fantastic and will make sure that your book uh, looks really great standing on a shelf next to any other book at Barnes & Noble. I'm going to choose the elegance template. I'm going to leave color checked for now because I want to show you what we do with the images. Um, but you can also uncheck color and have just a real nice black and white book created and ready for print on demand with just one click. Um, the other thing that's really important about our system is you can change the trim size at any time. And this is valuable if you started off with a 5x8 book and you realized at the last minute it should have been 6x9. Just by changing the pull down here, you can actually modify the whole book and re-render it um, in a few seconds as opposed to having a graphic designer rebuild the entire thing. Um, so I'm going to hit preview PDF. Our system will actually generate the PDF automatically and uh, I'm going to open that in Adobe Acrobat so that I can show you some things about it. Okay. Once we have this, here we go, let me bring it down here and show you what it looks like um, in s full view here. Once your book is created, we um, uh, Fast Pencil automatically generates the title page. You can see here the title, my ebook memoir, the author's name, the publisher at the bottom. If you had your own publisher's account with Fast Pencil, this would be your imprint name here. Um, I can go through each of these pages and I can see some of the specifics that are created here in the metadata. You can see that um, the Fast Pencil metadata is automatically added to your copyright page. Um, but as a uh, publisher, if you have a publisher account, you can actually put your own metadata in here as well. Um, the table of contents is automatically paginated and created for you. Uh, each chapter is titled. You can see that everything in marriage and family, all the subsections and everything are nicely nested. They're not shown here at the top level table of contents. Um, if you did want to show them, you could choose that option in the publishing setup. 
um, and I'll go over that when I go through the publishing setup for you. Um, but you can see essentially that the book is actually created in a way that has beautiful fonts, uh, and we really just took the time to make sure that your book is going to be really nice when it's published. Um, we've had authors look at this for the first time and say, oh my gosh, I actually believe that this book I've been working on for 10 years is going to be published and I'm going to actually have it here in my hands. Um, and then I'm actually going to jump over here to the Baja Surf Trip because I wanted to show you how the images look. Remember I talked about, or in one of the previous videos, I talked about how your images can be float left or float right and how the text wraps around them. Here's the example that we floated it to the right and we put the text here around it. Um, and then I'll go to the next section here. You can see how the image here was left alone and it centers on the page nicely. Okay, And these were all imported from my blog post. And if you missed that uh, video, go back a few and you can see the uh, blog import section. Um, but essentially, this is how our system takes content that is unstructured and we uh, put it into a beautiful template so that when the book is published, it looks really fantastic. Everything is paginated. All of the title pages are created and the chapter pages are created. You can see the nice little uh, n uh, page numbers in different places. Everything is done through our templates so that it really turns out nice. Okay, um, And then let me show you one of the amazing things here. So that was the elegance template and that was with color. So I'm going to uncheck color. I'm going to change the template to let's say memoir medium. Uh, the medium and the large designations are for the type size. So if you wanted to increase your type size, uh, a font font size one point, just go to the next size up. And we did that for um, larger print editions and stuff, with the, but to still stay within our um, template system. And I'll go to a 7x10 instead of the 6x9 and I'll click preview PDF here again and you'll see that our system will take the new data, it will uh, grab all of the content that you've uh, been working on and it will filter that through the um, through the template that we just chose, the memoir template, and it will produce a new PDF. Now while this is spinning, let me take a few minutes to talk about our templates. Um, the templates that we provide on fastpencil.com, the ones that are provided for the independent author that most people will be using, were professionally designed by book designers to um, create books that are very beautiful and that really uh, stand out uh, as professional, professionally designed books. Uh, you know, we don't want to just publish Microsoft Word documents. We want to actually create books that look beautiful. Um, now, these templates are fixed templates. They, you, they cannot be modified. Um, they can't be, uh, you, you can't choose a template at this time and say, well, I want to change the font size uh, to 7 instead of 10, or I want it to be 14 instead of you know 12 or, or whatever. You can't actually do that with um, these templates that are on the Fast Pencil system. Um, there is an option if you do license Fast Pencil as a publisher or an editor, um, if you are interested in uh, licensing the platform and having it deployed either on the cloud or in your own data center, um, that we can work with you to create templates that are specific to the, one, the way that you need them, um, or also to provide what we call transformation um, files so that your authors or editors or whoever's in charge of the actual publishing piece can modify certain aspects of the templates. So um, you might say, okay, I'd like everything about this template, but I want to change the font size or I want to change the font from uh, Helvetica to uh, Verdana or something like that. Um, but we can discuss that if you want to contact us for enterprise and publisher licensing options. Uh, we can talk about those, but the platform itself that you would log into on fastpencil.com, whether you're an independent author or a publisher, small publisher, um, you will be working from these templates. And again, uh, these templates work for 90% of the cases to produce beautiful books uh, that, uh, you know, all, all of the Fast Pencil users that, that go through this system are just blown away at how easy it is to create a book that looks really nice and, uh, and is rendered in print-on-demand ready for the press as well as the EPUB version which is ready for distribution and the Mobi version which is ready for uh, distribution to Kindle. Okay. So let me show you here a couple of differences. We made it bigger, 
Well, we changed the, the template to memoir. You can see memoir has uh, no chapter designations, just numbers, uh, as opposed to saying chapter one, chapter two. Um, you can see the font is a little bit different. Um, and then I'll jump here to uh, the, uh, let's go to a different chapter here. Um, let's see, page uh, 15. Uh, you can go back to where we had the um, images, and you can see that the images are now black and white. Our system does all of the grayscale conversion automatically, so if you upload color images, our system will do the grayscale for you. Um, or if you want to upload uh, images and they're RGB, our system will also convert to CMYK for color books. So it's a very flexible, very powerful system. And uh, like I said, if you just click the preview button, and try out the different templates you'll be able to quickly see the difference between them you know some of them have different fonts some of them have different spacing between paragraphs some have indents some don't have indents um, it's actually a lot of fun and it's no harm at all in trying every one of the templates out at different sizes so you actually can without you can't hurt your project at all by doing this it's, it's actually kind of fun go in and try the business template of 5 by 8 and then try the dragon template at five by eight, you know, or change it to six by nine, and try them all out and see which one you like the best. Uh, it won't hurt anything, and it's actually kind of fun, and you can see how your book will render in each of the different templates. Um, but essentially, that's the magic of fast pencil. It's a way to quickly turn content, manuscripts, uh, unedited, you know, I mean, uh, unformatted uh, content into beautiful books that are ready for printing and uh, print on demand. So the PDFs that are created from these books by our system are actually print ready and uh, our system actually uh, is, uh, goes to the full specifications of the uh, you know most current print on demand printers and the books that come out are really fantastic. So that's the um, preview button and then the next video we'll talk about publishing and actually uh, taking the step from creating the book and designing it to publishing it and actually getting it out there to the world. In the last video we went through the preview step where you click preview, you selected a design and a trim size and you previewed what your book was going to look like uh, when it was printed that should give you an idea of exactly what your book will look like when it's ready to be published. Um, if you go through that preview step and you are still finding errors or issues with your book, it's important at this point to go back into the chapters and make those changes before you publish. But once you're ready to publish, um, you click the publishing setup. And Today we're going to talk about publishing through Fast Pencil and the three different ways that you can do it currently. Um, if you have a publisher's account at Fast Pencil, if you've upgraded to the publisher's account, then you will have an imprint option here. The imprint for you will be your company publishing name and then the imprint that uh, you've designated. You can choose that option and then you can also enter in your own ISBN numbers uh, at this time. So if you have a publishing company, you have your own block of ISBNs, you have your own imprint with your own logo, and your spine logo and your back cover logo and those kinds of things it's important at this point to choose the correct imprint name that you want to publish under and then to enter in your own ISBN numbers you're gonna need an ISBN number for your printed book um, and then one for your ebook as well those are two different numbers um, and then you're gonna have the title of your book this is important because this metadata is captured and sent along with your book during distribution. When we send this out to Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Ingram, uh, we send out the title and the subtitle um, and the authors and the edition uh, in one block. So if you want to uh, change it right now, it's important that you have that that information right here. Okay, you're going to enter that information. You're going to click the next button. If you are not a publisher actually let me go back one step here if you're not a publisher if you're just an independent author and you want to self publish your book and you want fast pencil to assign the ISBN number then you're going to leave all of this information here blank and just enter in your title subtitle and 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 this other metadata here when you go through the steps and you choose wide distribution we will automatically assign a fast pencil ISBN number to your print book and to your ebook 
different ISBN numbers and those will be what we'll use for the uh, distribution okay so I'm gonna click the next button and here you want to enter in the description of your book the description is really for the metadata that gets sent out to the channels okay and this is important because the retailers like Amazon and Barnes and Noble will take this description and that's what they're gonna display with the book okay this book is about my life um, the author that's here Michael Ashley is um, co-founder and CTO at Fast Pencil okay um, the summary is actually more of an internal area that you can use to um, share information about your book with your collaborators but it's also it also can be used to put uh, text on the um, dust jacket if you decide to do a hardcover book that has a dust jacket on it then you can put text here and this text will get printed on the inside flaps of the dust jacket so this is a good place to put that kind of information again it might be a small summary of the book or something that you might want to have on the inside flap of a dust jacket you can also leave them blank if you don't want to put anything there the next section for categorization is about your BISAC codes if you've heard of BISAC codes before they are the codes used to organize categories for the retailers like Amazon and Ingram and bookstores um, you can select a maximum of three BISAC codes here they are your main categories for your book and I'll choose say uh, body mind and spirit autobiography and autobiography you can also put in some keywords that are separated by commas and these can also help when people do searches for your book okay so I might put in uh, Ashley family tree and uh, mash as my nickname okay and this is all stored in our metadata file again this is what gets submitted for distribution um, my copyright year is auto populated I can leave it as 2012 or if I want to change it to 2013 or uh, earlier maybe 2011 I can do that here but I'm gonna just leave it for now the copyright holders can be modified as well if you are the uh, sole copyright holder you can put your name there if you have other copyright holders like illustrators you can put that there as well the license is there's a standard license that usually goes with most books that basically says no part of this publication may be reproduced stored in a retrieval system or transmitted in any form um, and this is the standard license that we allow you know that we kind of put in by default for you if you have a different license you can modify it yourself change it to anything you want you can also add your own disclaimers here you know um, uh, do let's see I let's see don't hold me responsible for any crazy things you might do as a, of reading this book okay you can put whatever disclaimer you want if you have a standard one for your company or whatever you can put that in there I'll hit the next button and I'll go to um, the uh, dedication the dedication and the acknowledgments are little extras that we added here in the publishing step if you haven't already added a chapter for dedication and a chapter for acknowledgments which you can do in the editor um, you can add them in here if you did it in the editor they would be they would look like chapters and they would be um, uh, collected into the front matter uh, and you would do that using that chapter menu that I talked about it earlier in the video if you didn't do that though and you wanted the um, to add a dedication and an acknowledgement you could do that here and I could say you know to mom with love and acknowledgements I might want to put in something here you know to you know thanks to all my friends uh, etc but you could put in paragraphs of content here in acknowledgments if you wanted to the dedication you really want to try and keep that uh, to one or two lines it's it's the very elegant nice dedication you usually see at the beginning of a book um, you know to my children or to my mom with love that kind of stuff I'm gonna hit the next button and that'll save that and it'll move me on to formats one of the important things about fast pencil is that from one project you can create both the printed book and the ebook and so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna select both the printed book and the ebook and this is very powerful and it makes it really quick to create a book that you can um, uh, distribute both as print-on-demand and as EPUB and Mobi 
uh, for both Amazon, Barnes Noble, and iBooks, and iPad, uh, and Ingram Digital, you know, and all those other places that we'll go to here, and I'll talk about that in a second. <clears throat> so I chose both formats, and so now my distribution options are here. I can either choose to publish this as a private book, meaning uh, I just want to maybe print five copies and give them to my children. Um, I could publish this into the Fast Pencil Marketplace, and the Fast Pencil Marketplace um, I'll go over in another video, but essentially it provides you with a page where you can sell your book directly to your own um, following of users. So, for example, I might be a, a, a speaker and I speak at all of these different conferences and I put on all of these seminars and I have books and things that I like to sell, books and ebooks that I sell to the, the people who attend. Um, I actually could give out my page on Fast Pencil directly to the attendees and they could go and purchase all of my books uh, directly fr through Fast Pencil and by doing that I actually can get a larger much larger royalty than if I were to send them to Amazon or Barnes and Noble or um, any of the other retailers and we provide that free for now if you choose marketplace you could put your book up and sell it directly to your um, readers and then wide distribution is really powerful. Wide distribution is $299. It covers um, both ebook and print on demand distribution to Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, Kindle, um, Nook, iPad, iBooks, um, Ingram, Ingram Digital. Uh, and the list goes on. It really is the widest distribution that you can uh, imagine for uh, for an aspiring author or an independent author or even a small publisher to get their books out into um, all of the retail channels. And we'll do all of that, both ebook and print on demand versions for $299. I'm going to uh, click uh, Marketplace free here so I can f uh, take you through the rest of the process. Um, but uh, wide distribution is really easy. You just click uh, the wide distribution button. Our system will automatically assign ISBNs for you if you uh, are an independent author um, or if you are a, um, uh, a publisher. If you have a publisher's account, um, then it will use the ISBN numbers and the metadata that you've already input for your publishing company. All right, so I'm going to choose Marketplace free. I'll click the Next button. And you can see here that it gives me another option to look at the template and the size that I chose. I'm not going to change. You can see if I did change it to 6x9 or 5x8, you know, how that actually changes the shape of the book. Uh, you know, you can see here that I have, I could go to a vertical, horizontal uh, size or whatever. Okay, I'll leave it at, at uh, 7x10. Actually, I'll, I'll change it to 6x9. And, um, and I'll click the Next button. And our system will, it'll take all of that new information, all the new data, the metadata and everything, and it will create the print-on-demand PDF that will get uh, sent out to our vendors for uh, publishing and uh, print-on-demand fulfillment. And I'll talk about that in another video as well. Um, and it will also create the EPUB version and the ebook version that gets uh, sent out to uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iBooks, uh, etc. Um, here you can see I have some paper choices. I can choose white or cream. I can also choose whether I want it to be a perfect bound paperback book, a case laminate hardcover, or a dust jacket book. And that means a, uh, a book that is a hardcover but is wrapped with a piece of paper that, you know, that is the actual cover of the book. I'm going to leave it as perfect bound and we'll go to the next step here and we'll look at the book cover page. The book cover page allows you to upload an image for the front and an image for the back cover. We um, we check this checkbox by default here for adding a quarter inch border around the front and back cover because a lot of uh, um, independent authors aren't really savvy about uh, uploading images and this really just makes it so that you know your cover is going to look nice if you just upload an image but if you're actually a little bit more um, uh, talented with say Photoshop you can uncheck that and you can actually upload your own image um, and it will tell you what size the image needs to be. So you can see here that uh, in order to create an image or a front cover with the appropriate bleeds and everything, I'm going to upload a 1988 by 3075 pixel um, image, a JPEG or a PNG, and I can upload RGB or CMYK. And then here's some other specifications that it should have on its top, 
right and bottom edges. That means the outside edges of the image should have a 0.625 inch bleed around them. This is what's going to get cut off when the book is actually printed and um, the cover is, uh, is uh, glued on. So again, pay attention to these specifications and here's further information about the, uh, the cover if you need it. Um, the other thing is that you can um, upload a back cover as well and same thing here you have specifications you can also choose the color background uh, let's choose um, let's just choose blue and then let's make the uh, text uh, white if I was uploading an image that included my title and author on the image itself then I would uncheck this because I don't want fast pencil to print the author title and uh, on top of my image that already has it on there but um, in this case, I'm not going to be putting anything up there, so I'm just going to check it. Um, same with the back cover. If you want to upload an image that has all of the content and text and everything on it, you can do that here. Um, uh, or you can just upload an image and you can uh, put uh, the description on the back cover. Okay, and I'll just change that to white as well. And then the spine color, you can choose that as well. And Fast Pencil will, if there's more than 80 pages, Fast Pencil will give you an option to print a title on the spine. And you can actually put the uh, author and the title on the spine if you want it. So our system is going to actually go through and it will now render this front cover. Um, it'll render an appropriate cover for the ebook. And it will render an appropriate cover that's set up for the print on demand book as well. That means it will include all of the crop marks, all of the bleed, um, everything to specifications for print on demand. This is pretty amazing actually. If you know anything about book printing in the past, um, you would have to go through a graphic designer and you'd have to use really expensive, complicated tools to create these kinds of uh, assets that are necessary for actually publishing a book. Our system will actually do all of this for you automatically and um, if you chose wide distribution we actually even create the ISBN barcode and the price barcode that goes on the back of the book and this is uh, really important because once you go out into distribution you have to be uh, certain specifications for all the retailers to be able to use your content you know or actually to be able to sell your book uh, out there whether it's online or anywhere else you still need to be at the appropriate spec. So um, our system here is creating not only the cover but the insides of the book and uh, it will create the, uh, the um, e-book as well. And so we're just a few steps away from finishing here. Y you can take a look at the cover spread and it'll show you exactly what your cover is going to look like when it's, um, uh, when it's printed. This is really important. Actually I'm going to open it up because I want to show you this. When you are reviewing your cover make sure that you look at the crop marks here okay these crop marks are telling you where the cover is going to get cut off if you have an image that goes outside of the crop marks here it's going to get cut off as well as the spine this tells you where the spine is going to get folded and these are the crop marks as well and this is going to give you a good idea of what your cover is spread is going to look like this is the back cover on this side this is the front cover on this side Here's the bottom with the logo. If you have your own publisher's account, you'll see your own publisher's logo here. And here's the ISBN barcode information. If you had uh, gone through wide distribution, you would see that out there as well. But this is really critical. Pay attention to these crop marks right here so that you make sure that your image is centered appropriately and is not going to get cut off when your book is published. Okay. And then finally, you're going to go to your pricing page. This is going to tell you what, you know, what your book is going to cost you, all right? That's what it'll cost to actually get a copy of the book for myself. This is what you're going to charge your readers, okay? I'm going to change that to 7.99 and you'll see that these numbers change. When I sell this book through Fast Pencil, then I'll actually make $4.46 on every one that's sold. I can change the ebook price as well. I can change that to 7.99. And I, you'll see I can make I make six dollars and thirty nine cents whenever that's sold. So I might want to make my ebook even less. Maybe I'll make that five ninety nine. And so that I'm, my profit is comparable whether they buy the ebook at five ninety nine or the print book at seven ninety nine. And then finally, um, Fast Pencil will take all of that information. It will embed the price on the cover, 
It will um, create all of the assets ready for print on demand. I can go through and review everything about my book, make any final changes, and then I'm going to order some copies. So I might order just one copy at first because I want to proof my book. I want to hold it in my hands and see exactly what it feels, looks, reads like before I publish it into wide distribution. And so actually is a good way, um, you know, a recommendation for people that you might want to publish it first into the marketplace before you choose wide distribution just so that you can order a proof copy and take a look at it and see how it feels. Um, you're going to hit the Add to Cart button and that will uh, put it right into the cart. You can see what you're getting, uh, the print copy at $2.42, the digital uh, catalog fee of $9.99 uh, for creating all of the EPUB assets and the other assets that go into the digital catalogs. Um, and then you can actually check out. And so that really is the uh, publishing step front end to end. Uh, you just follow the wizard, fill out the forms, enter in your information, and uh, check out and your print copy will be on its way to you so that you can uh, you can proof it. You'll also be able to download your ebook uh, e version so that you can proof that as well. And then once you're happy with everything, go ahead and publish it using the $2.99 wide distribution option and we'll get it up in uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Kindle, Apple, iBooks, Ingram, Ingram Digital, and you know lots of, uh, lots of play places. Um, and uh, usually within 24 to 48 hours for the ebook stuff and then within a week or two for the, uh, the print-on-demand stuff. So talk about getting to market quickly and uh, using a very powerful Fast Pencils uh, online digital publishing workflow system. Uh, you can go from an idea all the way to published and out in the world with a few clicks. So in the next one here we'll talk a little bit about uh, the marketplace and how to market and sell your book now. Now that you have published your book, your book will appear in the Fast Pencil Marketplace. If you chose wide distribution, your book would also appear on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Kindle, Nook, Apple's iBook Store, as well as Ingram Digital and, um, and the Ingram uh, Book Network as well. So let me just show you quickly uh, what the Fast Pencil Marketplace looks like and also kind of what your book would look like on Amazon uh, and both in, in the ebook fo format and the uh, regular printed format. Um, there are some things about the Fast Pencil Marketplace that uh, you can use to help market and sell your book as well. So every book is um, given a book details page. Okay, I'm going to put in the iPad publishing guide here. This is a book that I published recently. If you don't have it, it's actually free on Kindle and the iPad. If you uh, look up the iPad publishing guide, you can download it for free. And it essentially will take you through the steps of publishing on uh, uh, Fast Pencil. But here you have the, uh, the um, book details page. This page is built from your um, author profile information which is down here you can see the author profile information as well as my Twitter account these things are built into um, the uh, details page and again you can manage all of that information from your account button um, but you can also see that the book is available for purchase directly from this page if I wanted to send this page out I could take this URL and send it to anyone they could come directly here and they could purchase the book what you're seeing here is the retail price. This is the price everyone sees that they will pay when they buy the book. This is my price. This is the price I see because I'm logged into Fast Pencil. Um, I see that my price is $4.82. Uh, or if I wanted to re-download the asset files for the PDF or the ebook, I could re-download those as well. Um, but essentially, the author sees one price and the uh, re or the um, reader sees the regular retail price. You can also see here that my book is available on Kindle, iPad, Barnes & Noble. So if I click here, I'll show you what the same book looks like on Amazon. You can see here that uh, it's the same cover, it's the information is here, um, it has the list price of $12.99, the digital price has been reduced to zero so that we can give this thing away for free. So if you want to go get it, go ahead and download it. Um, and then let me uh, go ahead and go back here. You can see also that the uh, book is available on the Nook and, um, and so on and so forth. So 
your book, once you publish, will be um, distributed out to all the channels, but you'll also be given this special URL here where you can share it with anyone and they can come and purchase it directly from your page here at Fast Pencil where you're going to make a lot more uh, royalty as opposed to going through a uh, distribution channel. And then there's another book by widget that we provide you with here. Your book by widget is where you can actually click and copy this code and paste it into your website or your blog and it will come up like this here. It shows a thumbnail of the image of the cover. It has the title of the book and the author and a buy now button and then a preview link that brings the reader back here to the book preview. And and the book preview here they can go through and actually get an idea of what the book says and how it looks and, and everything before they actually buy it okay so very powerful um, book details page that you get whenever you publish through fast pencil and you also get an author's page your author's page is your account page and it captures all of the information from your profile as well as the extra links that you put in for your um, how we can find you and we talked about that in an earlier video if you don't know what I'm talking about go ahead and visit I think it was the first video um, and you can edit your account but you can also quickly see from your authors page your own library of books these are all books that I've published and are available to uh, myself and to others um, and then I'll show you here real quickly in the marketplace what this looks like for another user who um, really took advantage of this this Favel is the Friends of African Village Libraries um, program. They actually publish books and bring them to Africa and stock African Village Libraries with them. And the books are actually published by students who've traveled to um, the different villages and they took pictures and they talked with the villagers and they, they made up these books based on real life that was happening there. And then they come back, they make the books in fast pencil, they publish them, and then they bring them back to Africa and they put them in libraries and so it's really a, a beautiful program it helps a lot of people and uh, they published their whole um, library here in Fast Pencil you can see if I click on the Friends of African Village Libraries link I can see the information about them I can see the links to get to their um, uh, website etc but I can also look at all the different publications that they have available and this is really like creating a business um, using fast pencil you have a library of books uh, any of these books you can view the details on and go directly to the book and you can read about it you can buy it directly um, you can actually go down and preview the book and you can see what it looks like uh, you can read some of the book and um, you know it's just a very powerful thing so when you publish through fast pencil you get not only a book details page but you get an author's page that gives you um, you know a library of publications that you can direct people to so that they can purchase at any time and that essentially is the um, the way that fast pencil provides you with the uh, necessary uh, place and e-commerce functionality we'll do all of the e-commerce we capture the orders we collect the credit card money we send out the book we do all the fulfillment you actually don't do any work at all we do all the work and then we'll send you the royalty checks um, quarterly so it's a very powerful simple system easy way to get up and running and um, to get published and start uh, getting the word out about your your books uh, in the next video I'm going to talk a little bit about the fast pencil community and I think this will help tie it back together with where we started as uh, how fast pencil really is an end-to-end -end, um, uh, digital workflow publishing system that can help both authors and publishers as well as uh, full enterprises with years of content that they want to monetize um, and we'll do that in another vi next video now that you've published on fast pencil you might think you might be thinking hey I'm a pretty good editor or I'm an illustrator I would like to actually become part of the community and offer my services to help other authors uh, you know, or maybe you want to just be a, um, a consultant or a mentor. You can actually um, go to your account and you can add a portfolio to your account and become part of the Fast Pencil community. Now, the Fast Pencil community is not just the authors who make up Fast Pencil and who write these wonderful books, but it's also um, service providers, people who like, are like Dan Seward, who is an illustrator who put up his um, 
uh, uh, illustrations and one of our authors found him really liked his work and they, they worked together and they created a really beautiful book um, called Percy and it was an illustrated children's book and it came out really nice so um, not only are the authors the fast pencil community but the um, professionals who make up the um, services that we offer now, there's two ways that um, uh, individuals can participate in the community these uh, service providers they can do sort of what we call the free market where they put their portfolio up and they allow others to um, browse and just look at their stuff and then correct connect with them directly here's Dan Seward who I talked about just a second ago um, you know you can see here that he put up his portfolio and here's some images and I can actually take a look at his images and I can say wow that's really cool I, I'd like him to do my next cover or maybe he, I'd like him to work with me on the children's book if I wanted to I could send him a message directly and I could work with him directly this is uh, just a one-to-one -one connection we just trying to put um, people who need help together with people who can offer help um, but if you're not comfortable with that say you're an author and you actually want to go through fast pencil you can see here that Dan has actually um, listed his services with us as an illustrator. And by doing this, he goes through a process where he has to send the illustrations to us and we'll approve him as an illustrator. And then once he's approved, he gets this new button on his page and the authors can actually request services directly from him through Fast Pencil. So the, the author would fill out the information about their book, they would put in what services they need, um, they may be tell us how much money they're willing to spend, um, and then this request will get sent to us as well as Dan, and we'll negotiate a contract for Dan to work with this author. Um, and by doing that, um, you know, we actually can help to support uh, the author and the author services provider at the same time and make sure that something really wonderful comes out of the deal. Um, that's basically how the community works. Uh, there's authors in the community, there are service providers in the community, and we try and let people connect um, you know, by themselves. If they want to, they can friend each other, they can work together on things, or if they really want to, they can actually look for authorized service providers, and they can put in their quote request and uh, have Fast Pencil actually manage the, um, the work between them. Um, and in a nutshell, that's it. Fast Pencil really is about community. It's about working together um, on a platform that ties end to end the complete publishing process from um, you know content creation, which is just the idea that you have in your mind, all the way through publication, distribution, and selling your book uh, in both ebook and printed formats. It's a very powerful platform. It's really easy to use and it has been available to authors now since 2008 um, but for the first time now ever we have uh, created a licensing option where publishers can get publisher accounts and enterprises can actually um, implement a white label solution of fast pencil to help to uh, aggregate content maybe that they have uh, sitting or that they want to create um, and turn into books and ebooks and take advantage of all of these uh, new technologies that are out there. So um, good luck with Fast Pencil. Enjoy your time here and uh, join in the community. Thank you very much.